Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we're going to be taking a look at both the pitch strategy menu and also the in-car management menu. We're going to start off with the pitch strategy menu first as there's a number of things that tie rather nicely with the in-car management menu later so it makes sense to do it this way round and the pit strategy menu can be found on both the pre-race screen at the start of race sessions but also in the in-garage screens during your practice and qualifying sessions as well. So going into the pit strategy menu we have an option here to create a new pit strategy. We've obviously got an already existing default strategy and then down in the bottom left here we've got a breakdown with fuel tyres damage representing how long the pit stop is going to take with an estimation in seconds and then obviously the default pitch strategy is currently the one that is shown as active by the tip indicated here and there's also an option to edit that default pitch strategy as well. We are however going to create a new pitch strategy first and depending on the type of race that you're going to be going into you may want to think about how you're going to actually name your pitch strategy as you may need to create multiple pitch strategies especially for longer races. Now generally I tend to break this down into three main areas beginning with tyres, your fuel and then your repair options at the end. So you basically want to try and think of this in a way as making it as clear and concise as possible what it is that you're going to be doing in your pit stop with this pit strategy. So for example let's say I want a fresh set of hard tyres, hard slick tyres, I want to take full fuel and I want to do full repair. So I'm going to go H standing for hard tyres, I'm going to go F fuel for a full tank of fuel and then F repair or F rep for a whole repair to the car. So now we're getting a little bit deeper into the pit strategy menu where we have the same breakdown that we had previously with the estimation in seconds. We've got an option here to change our pit strategy name if we wish to, just select that again and it'll open up this dialog window where you can change or enter in a new name, but obviously I'm happy with that. We got the fuel and tyres set up, we got the damage repair, we got an option to save our pit strategy and then we've got an option to reset our pit strategy to its defaults. So going into the fuel and tyre setup option here you get presented with a whole bunch of stuff that you can change related to the fuel and tyres for your car. Now obviously this is all very much car dependent as to what stuff you can choose, especially the tyre compounds. Obviously certain cars use certain tyre compounds so not everything is going to be available and then the amount of fuel that you can add into the car is very much dependent on the size of the fuel tank in the car. So lowering this you can put it all the way down to adding zero litres of fuel in the pit stop which obviously mean that you're not going to put any fuel in the car and then you can put it all the way up to the maximum full tank capacity which in the BMW M6 GT3 that we're currently in, currently in is 131 litres. You also have an estimation here as to how many laps you'll be able to do with that amount of fuel that you are adding in and to start off with this is reasonably inaccurate because it is tied to the average fuel consumption. If you were to go out and do a whole bunch of laps in practice and qualifying sessions obviously your average fuel consumption will be a lot more accurate which means that the estimation of how many laps the fuel is worth is going to be a lot more accurate. Now obviously if I was to go into a pit stop with 20 litres still in the car and I'm choosing to add 131 litres which is the maximum amount of fuel that the fuel tank can possibly hold it's not going to add the full 131 litres, it's going to fill it up to the brim of that fuel tank. So I'm only going to be adding 111 litres in this case where I'm going in with 20 litres of fuel already in the car. So you need to bear that in mind when choosing the amount of fuel that you're going to be putting into the car. But it's a pretty good way where you can work out how much fuel you're going to need for the entire duration of the race and then you can set your fuel accordingly for the first stint and then for the second stint you can obviously deduct that first stint from the total amount of fuel that you need and then you'll be left with the amount of fuel that you'll need to add in to the car to do the remainder of the race. Below that you have the change tyres option at the moment this is set to none but you can choose which tyres you'd actually like to change on the car Recommended will change the tyres that are damaged or have been worn quite badly 
and then you can choose to just change the front tyres or you can choose to change just the rear tyres and then you finally have the option to change all tyres there. Matching all tyre compounds affects these four options here and obviously if you set this to yes all of these will change in unison whereas if you set it to no you can change each individual tyre for the corner of the car individually so you can choose to have say just soft slicks on the front and then hard slicks on the rear if you really want to which works very very nicely for IndyCar and oval racing. So we're going to set this to yes and then we're going to change and set our option to hard slick tyres as that's what we're planning on doing with this pit strategy here. We're planning on going full fuel so we've got that set already at 131 litres and then at the bottom here you've got the tyre pressures that you're going to be setting in your pit stop when changing tyres. Now bear in mind these are the cold pressures that you're going to be setting in your pit stop which means that when the pit stop actually happens the tyre pressures that are going to be set on the car are going to be about 0.3 to 0.4 bar higher than this value here. These values are currently in bar and equating that into PSI it's about 4.3 to 5.8 PSI higher than the values that will be set here in the pit strategy option. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're actually setting up your pit strategy that these options are actually 0.3 to 0.4 and 4.3 to 5.8 PSI lower than what, will, what you will be actually getting when the tyre change has actually happened. Now coming to the damage repair section you can choose what areas of the car you would actually like to repair. So you've got the four corners of the car for the suspension, the brakes, obviously you've got the gearbox here, the engine, and then you've got front aerodynamics and rear aerodynamics as well. These will take time to repair. This is a big difference between Project Cars 2 and the first game, where the first game you pretty much got instant repairs and you didn't have to worry about it. But now in Project Cars 2, it actually takes time to repair each various part of the car. The suspension will take 30 seconds to repair for each individual corner. The brakes will also take 30 seconds to repair for each individual corner. The gearbox will take 3 minutes to repair and so will the engine, that's another 3 minutes. Front arrow will take 20 seconds and then rear arrow will take 40 seconds to repair which means they will give a grand total of 10 minutes to repair everything on the car. Now obviously as I'm planning on doing a full repair on the car I'm going to put everything to yes in this here and you can see that the pit stop estimation is going up with that as well and that is because it is taking into full account of repairing absolutely everything here. Now obviously if I go into the actual pit stop itself and I don't have any damage on the car the damage step will be ignored and it will be skipped because there's no damage to actually repair on the car so it will take a lot lot less time than the 841 seconds that it is approximating here with the rest of the pit stop that we are currently planning so keep that in mind when obviously going into a race as to what kind of damage you're likely to get and also whether it's actually going to be worth trying to repair that time obviously the longer the race the the more chance you have to repair the car and claw back the time that you have lost in the pit stop but obviously on very short races it's probably not worth taking the time to repair say the aerodynamics or the engine or the gearbox in a pit stop so take that into account when setting up a pit stop for the race and tailor it to the type of race that you're actually doing so now that we're happy with our pit strategy we're obviously going to save it hit continue and then we shall be returned to the pit strategy menu and you can see that the pit strategy that we have just created has now been added to the list of pit strategies here and selecting it will make it active with the tick icon and obviously I can choose to delete it if I so wish I can choose to go back in and edit it as well. So as you can see now I've created a whole bunch of pit strategies which have been added and listed here. I've used the same naming conventions as before so in this pit strategy I'm planning on using or changing to a soft tyre obviously going with a full tank of fuel and a full repair. This pit strategy as you can see down at the bottom here I haven't planned for any damage repairs at all and that's made the pit stop estimation a lot lot lower than the previous estimations. Obviously this is not going to take a full 841 seconds if I don't have any damage to actually repair it's just estimating 
the very worst case scenario essentially. But with this option, when I'm not planning on doing any damage repairs, the estimation is a lot, lot lower. I'm planning on changing to the hard tyres, but I'm only planning on adding 55 litres of fuel as well, not a full tank this time. This strategy, as you can see, I'm not planning on putting any fuel into the car, which is why the bar is completely empty, but I'm planning on changing to the soft tyres and I'm planning on doing a full repair on the car as well. And then this final strategy, basically just accounting for any changes to wet weather. So I've got a wet weather tyre plan for this one, obviously only adding 20 litres of fuel, so just a quick splash and dash, and again, no damage repair planned for the car either. So hopefully that helped you learn a little bit about how the pit strategy menu works and we're now going to take a look at the in-car management menu. So now we're going to take a look at the ICM menu, otherwise known as the in-car management menu. And I doubt too many people are actually familiar with this and have seen as it's something that is new to Project Cars 2 and hasn't really been covered yet. But it's a very, very powerful tool. And once I've shown it to you, you'll probably end up using it quite a lot whilst driving out on the circuit. So if we quickly go into the options, go under controls, then edit assignments, and then into the game tab here, you should see these five options. You've got a car management option here, which is defaulted to the D-pad up button. And then we've got the ICM menu up, down, left, and right, which are mapped to the arrows on the D-pad. So obviously D-pad up, D-pad down, left, right, you get the idea. Now the D-pad up button upon initial pressing will open the in-car management menu and I can navigate it up and down and also change various features so we'll show you that to you now and it's basically it's mapped to the d-pad by default on the wheels on the controllers for your ps4 and your xbox so pretty much everyone should be able to access this but pressing it up will open up this menu here and there's a whole bunch of stuff and then up and down will obviously navigate up and down Left and right will allow you to change various bits up and down, turn things on and off, and also go into pages, and then provided you've got the go back or the close option highlighted, you'll be able to interact with those to close the ICM. Now if I press up on the D-pad once to open the ICM menu and don't touch anything, the ICM menu will automatically close after 5 seconds. It does this if the player does not interact with the ICM menu. So what I mean by interacting with it is simply pressing up or down or changing something. So if I was to wait four seconds and then press down, it will reset that five second timer and give me another five seconds of the menu there being present, which means it's quite useful for when you're kind of going through a sequence of corners, you can kind of quickly bring the ICM menu up and then keep it open for a little bit. And then once you're through that sequence of corners, you can then actually focus and interact with the ICM menu. So actually going through the ICM menu now, obviously there's various different things that you can see here. We've got the option to close it. We've got an option to change the brake bias. We've got an option to change the fuel map on the car. We've got an option to request pit stop. We've got a car management, which goes into a subset of menus. And then we've got race strategy and we've got a subset of menus there as well. But these options that are available in the ICM menu very much depend on the car that you're driving. Not everything is going to be available and it entirely depends on what car it is. Some cars allow for, or should I say most cars, allow for brake bias adjustment. Some cars will allow for fuel mapping. And then under car management, you can see we've got traction control and anti-lock braking, but the front and rear anti-roll bars are locked out for us here as we cannot change those on the fly in the BMW M6 GT3 car that we're currently in. Other cars, however, will allow you to change the front anti-roll bars and the rear anti-roll bars whilst out on track and whilst driving around those options will be enabled in that case. So obviously the brake bias here, we'll go through the various options now. Brake bias obviously allows you to change the brake bias towards the front. Obviously, as we, uh, if we quickly flick the MoTeC display to the next page, you'll be able to see that changing the brake bias here for the front braking, basically the percentage of uh, the bias towards the front of the car, you can change that. You see that changing on the MoTeC display as well. And at the moment, with the 60, it means that we're sat 60% towards the front, 40% bias of braking towards the rear. Now the fuel map, by default this stays in rich, but you can change it down to normal and also down to lean. And basically that's a trade-off slash balance between the amount of fuel going into 
the engine, which on, then obviously affects the amount of power that it's putting out, which obviously affects your acceleration, your top speed, but also then affects your fuel consumption as well. A few, uh, rich fuel mixture or rich fuel map will mean that an awful lot of fuel is going in, which means that you get more horsepower, uh, which then obviously means more acceleration, better top speed, but also means more fuel consumption, whereas a lean mix would mean that there'll be less fuel going in, which means that you save more fuel, but obviously you will have less power, which means that your acceleration and your top speed won't be so great, and then obviously you've got normal as well in the middle. But majority of the time, people are going to leave it on rich. It's the default there. You don't really need to worry about it unless you actually need to start doing any proper fuel saving. The next one is a request pit stop button. Simply press that. It will notify your team that you want to make a pit stop on this lap. It comes up with a pit board over on the right hand side of the HUD there. Also, if you've got the race engineer turned on, you usually get an audio cue saying that the pit stop request has been acknowledged and then your, pits, your pit crew will be there waiting for you when you actually go into the pit stop. Pressing that button again will obviously then cancel the pit stop request that you have just made. Going into the car management menu, we've got an option to obviously go back to the main page of the in-car management menu, but we've also got option here to turn the stability control on and off. You can see that reflected in the tachometer down in the bottom right. You can see the stability control icon is flicking on and off as we uh, switch between the two options there. We then also got the traction control slip option, which is tied to the car car tuning option, which we kind of covered in the assists last week as well. Sorry, I'll just bring that back up. But um, yeah, we're able to change this and a lower number will mean that the traction control system will allow for less wheel slip before the traction control system actually kicks in, whereas a higher value will mean that the uh, system will allow for more wheel slip before the traction control system actually kicks in. Now this defaults to 0.9 by standard on a default setup. I'm currently running a setup that has got 0.12 and I tend to find that with the GT3 cars somewhere between the region of 0.12 to 0.15 is pretty good for dry traction control slip. It basically allows me to get the power down on the exit of corners without it getting too squirrely and oversteery. Uh, the main issue with 0.9, it works quite nicely there. Uh, the main issue with that is if you've got a wheel on the curb and you want to get the power down, the traction control system will kick in because it's detecting a lot of wheel slip where the wheel is spinning up on the curb. Whereas using a higher value, such as 0.12 to 0.15, will allow a bit more wheel slip and allow you to get the power down a little bit better uh, on the curb before the traction control actually traction control system actually kicks in. This last bit, the anti-lock braking, that's your ABS strength and a higher value will mean that the ABS system will kick in sooner when it's detecting that the wheel is starting to lock up under braking and then the lower value will obviously mean that it will allow for more wheel slip or more locking before the ABS system actually kicks in. I tend to leave this at default and what I tend to do is basically brake a, a certain amount uh, up to the threshold of where the ABS system is going to actually kick in. If you break to the point that the ABS system isn't kicking in and stay just under that threshold, you'll get the maximum braking performance. As soon as the ABS system kicks in, obviously the braking power is reduced, which then extends the braking distance and obviously that isn't optimal but I'll leave it at 0.75 you could reduce it in theory but that will mean that the tires are more likely to lock if you if you go and press harder on the brakes which obviously isn't great it's going to extend your braking distance even further but 0.75 it gives me that option to lean on the ABS system if I need to a little bit but ideally I want to try and stay off it and I want to obviously avoid the wheels from locking whilst under braking. So we'll go back and look at the final menu, which is the race strategy menu. And this is why I tend to use the naming convention that I do for my pit strategy. So at the top, you can see the current pit strategy that is actually active. Obviously, I've got an option there to go back, but I've also got an option here to actually select the strategy. And all the pit strategies that you have created will be listed here. So you can navigate up and down those and then pressing left or right will actually activate that strategy, which means that in a race where you've got multiple or will need to make multiple pit stops, you can create a whole bunch of strategies. And then once you've done your first pit stop, you can go, right, the second pit stop, I want 
this. I want my hard tyres and I want 55 litres of fuel and that's me set for the race. And you can basically flip between those and if you go back you can see that your current strategy has also uh, changed there as well. So that's why I use that naming convention so I can see at a very quick glance what pit strategy it is that I want to select for my next pit stop. And it's also pretty good in such a scenario where I don't know what the weather is going to be uh, later on perhaps someone I'm in a novel online lobby and someone's gonna put a random weather slot in somewhere along the line so it could possibly go to wet and I've obviously got the wet option there it could possibly go to snow so I could put in a pit strategy that will change onto the ice tires and I got myself covered essentially so obviously changing that on the fly very very useful what is also very very useful is actually adjusting that pit strategy itself and this option will allow you to adjust the strategy that you currently have selected so going into there if I suddenly decide actually I don't want hard slip tires I want soft slip tires I can do that also with the adding the amount of fuel that you want to add in on the next pit stop you can change that as well here and you need to press down or up to change how much fuel that you would like to add into the car in the next pit stop and also same with repair as well you've got an option here this is a bit more of a blanket option rather than choosing the individual suspension brake components whether you want to do the gearbox and stuff it's kind of more blanket I want to repair all damage on the car I want to repair only the mechanical damage on the car which will cover the suspension will cover the brakes and also cover the engine and gearbox I only want to repair the aerodynamic, aerodynamic damage on the car, which is this aero option here. So obviously that's the front and rear aero damage and it won't do any of the mechanical options. And then if I quickly go back into that again, I can choose to not repair the damage at all. So if I've obviously got this uh, strategy currently selected, where I did originally intend on changing to hard tires, taking a full tank of fuel and then wanting to do a full repair on the car, and I suddenly decide that I take a little bit of damage but it's not enough to really affect the car and slow it down too drastically on a per lap basis I can say actually I don't want to repair any of the damage on the car at all I'll just turn that off so very quick very useful feature here for quickly adjusting your strategy whilst you're driving around on circuit and then finally you've got a swap driver option there which will allow you to change to an AI driver in your pit stop which is obviously very very useful if you're aiming to do like a full Le Mans 24 hours that you can possibly do in the career race. You can do a couple of stints and then you can say I want to go for a break to have some have some food, go to the toilet, relieve yourself and get a cup of tea. You can switch the swap driver option on and then the AI will take over in the pit stop and then whilst the, pit, whilst the AI is driving out around when you're ready you can call them back into the pits with the request pit stop option here. They'll come in, providing you've got the swap driver option on, you'll take over control again when you go back out onto the track as well. So it's a fantastic piece of kit that is extremely useful when uh, driving around the circuit. So obviously I can fiddle with things whilst driving around the track and I can leave it and it will close when I want it to after five seconds of non-interaction there it goes and then yeah it's very very useful for making those adjustments on the fly whilst driving around the circuit and not having to worry about having to pause the game or thinking oh bugger I haven't set up any pit strategies for the actual race that I'm in as if you haven't set up any pit strategies you can just open up the default pit strategy so if I quickly do that now, I'll go to the default one. Obviously I've got a couple of corners so I need to actually focus on driving through those. But I'm just going to press down there to make sure that the uh, ICM menu stays open. And then now that I've got a bit of a straight, I can go into the adjust strategy option here. I can say I need soft slicks, I need 5 litres of fuel in the next pit stop. And continue on driving and then when I actually make the pit stop, it will carry out those actions for you with whichever current strategy you have active. So hopefully that's going to be a very useful tool for a lot of you drivers playing Project Cars 2. Obviously where it's on the D-pad, 
it means that all those functions are confined to that D-pad, which then also does free up an awful lot of options as well, such as the uh, request pit stop button and also adjusting the brake bias. Obviously, you don't need buttons to change those, as you can do them here in the ICM. So it's basically, it frees up a whole bunch of options for you and allows you to utilize more buttons on your on your wheel on your controller and free them up for other controls that you may wish or desire to use so that's going to conclude it for this episode hopefully you guys learn a fair amount on both the pitch strategies and also the icm menu and hopefully you'll be making good use of both of those throughout your time playing project cars 2 Next week, we're going to be covering the full pit stop process of how to do a pit stop both under AI control and also under manual control and basically how things are carried out there and a little bit of rules and regulations in and around the pit stops. But uh, yeah, that's good about that's going to be about it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon. Take care. Hey guys, it's Yorkie here with a Project Cars 2 video where today we're going to be taking a look at the various assists that are available in the game. Now, the majority of these can be found in the Options tab of Race Central under the Gameplay option.